So now that I've finished my test sunflower, this one, I'm going to make the one that I'm actually going to give for a gift. And I don't know what I was thinking. Sunflowers do not have rounded petals, so the petals are going to be pointed. Sunflowers do not have all these accent colors. So I'm going to go with sunflower yellow. I still can't seem to go with one color. So I'm going to go sunflower yellow, marigold yellow. The back, I can't use clear. So I'm going to use a sunflower yellow back. I was going to show how to cut a circle because I finally mastered it. But every time I try to film it, I end up going through a lot more glass. And I don't want to go through this yellow. So I just cut two circles. Everything worked great. But it's not on film. And then I have a bunch of strips, which are one and a quarter. I also put too many rows of petals. I guess I wanted to try out a sunflower, but mostly I just wanted to play with pretty yellow glass. So this is going to hang on my wall. But the next one is a gift. I think I did these. Let me take a look. These must have been an inch and a half. So I think I'm going to go with two and a half inch petals slightly rounded on this side and slightly pointed on that side. So let's get a bunch of these strips. Cut. Yeah, two and a half will give me an opportunity to nip them without losing too much glass. Yes, that looks good. So I'm going to cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips. Next. So cutting these petals is going to be a combination of nipping and cutting. Because I really like this shape. prints and hearts are out of the kiln the sunflower can go in and I'm going to build directly on the shelf I'm using marigold and sunflower as the two types of glass and then I have a sunflower that is like a variegated sunflower transparent the first layer It's going to go along touching and then I'm going to put a drop of glue where each one touches so they don't move and then the second layer is going to overlap. So I need to make sure that these continue to touch and these overlap just a little bit. So the interior ring, a lot of them had to be trimmed to get them to fit. So now I just have to make sure they're all, all the outer petals are touching, all the inner petals are in between two outer petals, and they have a similar overlap. And then I'll have to deal with the center which is going to be a combination of yellow frit, brown frit, sienna brown, coarse, and then black. So I put a dot of glass tack 
in between each petal, which will hold it in place. But for the center, I'm not going to use glass tack because I would have to use too much and it wouldn't work as well. So I use cheap hairspray and you just spritz and all of this adhesive burns right off. So you just spritz the center. If it gets on the petals, perfectly fine, but I want it to keep everything sort of in place in the center. tuck some sunflower frit in here just to keep the black from going too far because it really seems to want to slide down between the top petals. I'm not sure if I like that look or not so let me think about that a little bit but I might put a little bit of yellow uh, sunflower yellow frit in there to prevent it from going too far. Alrighty, this one is ready to go in the kiln. Of course, I'm going to keep finding little places that I need to touch up, little things I need to move. But I will fire it today, and I'll show you tomorrow. Now, the tips of these petals are going to bend back a little bit. So I may go in with a little bit of fiber and pad them up or I may leave them just the way they are. So I think I'm gonna let it sit for a little while and decide, do I want those petals to fall back or do I want them to stay? I've decided to keep them supported. I do not have any thin fire. What I have is this fiber blanket. So I'm gonna mask up, break it into much thinner pieces, flatten it down, just cut a little triangle and slide it in there. And that will support this petal without interfering with those petals. Okay, now she's ready for the kiln. This um, fuzzy batting, I didn't purchase. It came with the kiln when I bought it. The previous owner did some amazing sculptural work and so she had a quite a few different types of fiber bats. I just want to get a little bit of the dust off. I really need to stop playing at this point, but I don't. The center looks very shiny right now because I spritzed it with more hairspray to keep everything in place. See, it really shines it up. I don't want anything to move. Often, one of these little pieces of frit will jump onto a petal. I'm hoping that won't happen. I'll also have to touch up and make sure all my petals are even. Looks good. Okay, time to stop playing with it. It is in the kiln and it will go in for my standard tack fuse, which is slightly more contoured than normal tack because I want to keep as much texture as possible while still fusing everything together well. It is done and cool. Oh, I love it, except one of the little frit pieces jumped. I'm thinking instead of a bowl or a plate, I'm going to turn it into a wall hanging. So now I have to figure out how to attach a hanger in the back before refiring. I have to decide if I'm going to do something with that little piece of frit. So I was puzzling over this sunflower. I love the texture, so I do not want to do a full fuse, but you certainly can't make a bowl or a plate out of it with all the visible joinery. And then I got the sale email from Art Glass Supplies and they have a perfect solution. It is a fusible, well not fused I guess you'd call it cast, 
mold for a frame that you then slump. So it's like a plate holder for glass made out of glass. Stand mold arrived. I was hoping to do it in green, but I don't know if I have enough green to fill this thing. So I will probably do it in clear Tecta and run it this, um, run it today. I'm gonna do a test run, but I've decided to embed a sunflower in the stand. Probably not a good idea the first time you run a mold, but it would be really nice as a finished piece. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'll put it in for a full fuse. And then I'll let you know how it turns out. I filled it with really large scraps of Tecta. And then I sort of backfilled all the areas that were a little bit light with Tecta scrap. There were no fill weights with this one. I find the fill weights don't really make much of a difference anyway. They're just a suggestion. So I need to make sure my stems and leaves are straight. I don't have any big air holes like this right here. So I'm gonna go back and put some more for in there. That's up for today. Make a plate stand with a, an embedded sunflower for the sunflower. Okay, first step done. I do not know what all this is. This darkness looks like air bubbles maybe. It looks like my frit was maybe contaminated, but the pattern it made is beautiful. This is really great. Next step. Let's just clean it up and then slump it. There must have been some iridescent in my tech to scrap bin. And when I pounded it into frit, because there's definitely gold in this, but I love the way it worked out. I absolutely love this stand, but it is really thick for the particular piece that I wanted to support with it. So I've put another one in the kiln that is about two thirds the thickness of this one. And then I will slump them both. Let's see which one I like best. Yes, that turned out beautiful and it's thinner. So next up is to slump this. My second attempt at making a stand has been slumped. Oh my goodness, look at how cool that is. Let's get the kiln lit out of the way. I love it. That is fantastic. This mold is a game changer. For all those plates, platters, plaques, things that you make out of glass that you're just not quite sure how to display and you end up leaning precariously, you can now create the perfect stand. Look at that. Amazing.